And welcome back to Yahoo Finance on the Move. We talk a lot about real estate, whether people are leaving big cities, whether there is going to be a loss of value in residential or commercial real estate. And some of the best people to talk about that are the people who have billions of dollars on the line. John Gates is the CEO of JLL. And just to give you a sense of who they are once again, from their website, we buy, build, occupy, and invest in a variety of assets, including industrial, commercial, retail, residential, hotel, real estate. And you do that worldwide. I think you're in more than 80 countries. So it's good to have you here. Very simply, for those of us who are freaked out about what's happening to real estate prices in cities, what can you tell us? Well, I think it's too early to tell. We have many data points, and I can find a data point to to support just about any suggestion around what will happen. Uh, I think that the, what we need to do is be disciplined and not turn them into curves yet until we get multiple data points and we can start to see real trends happening. Obviously, what we know for sure is that people have pulled back from any kind of interaction for very good reasons. And there are fewer people in any kind of building, essentially, that you except for homes, single family homes and, and apartments. Right. Everything else has far less occupancy. But we believe that uh, for the most part, this is a transitional period that we will, uh, in fact, emerge and uh, it'll be safe to go back to work wherever it is you do work. Hey, John, Rick Newman here. Earlier in the hour, we were talking about the new Trump eviction moratorium and just the general situation with tenants, including commercial tenants, uh, not able to pay rent or not being able to pay their full rent. Um, how is this working out in the real estate industry? Is there plenty of cushion for this or are there a lot of landlords who are starting to uh, you know, feel discomfort because they owe mortgages and taxes and all of that? Well, discomfort, yes, Rick. But no, there, there's a pretty good cushion for this. Um, you know, the Fed has intervened and that happens a couple of different ways. And then um, we see rent collections are, are actually very high across most products. Retail is an obvious exception. If you have a restaurant or two, you cannot pay rent. If you own the building, there's no sense in kicking that restaurant out. What you're doing is you're forgiving the rent for the time period until somebody can have an operating business um, that works for them and they can reemploy people and pay them. Because if you, if you push them out, all you have to do is re the space. There's no reason to do that. So there's, pr there's a pretty good cushion right now. John, your, your firm, you've been reopening offices worldwide in Asia, the Asia Pacific region, as well as in the Middle East and in Europe. But there's a metric here in Manhattan, New York City, that new leases, uh, roughly 1.3 million square feet. But we're at a level we haven't seen. It's the lowest level in 20 years for new leases. As you're opening offices in other places, are there lessons to be learned about what we're going to get in the New Yorks and the Chicago's and the major cities of the United States? Yeah, I think I think there are. Now, effectively, the metric that you saw in New York has played out all over the world in all kinds of cities. In, in our industry, we've never seen a pullback this rapidly, and it's happened uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and then you have some markets that are unique. Public transportation and the very vertical nature of New York will, will cause it to be a longer lead time, I think, to reoccupy fully. But we see very consistently corporate America, when they pull their own employees, their employees want a place to go back to work to. They would like to have flexibility around the number of days they're in a week. So I think eventually you'll, you'll see repopulation of all these uh, office buildings to pretty full levels. Hey, John, uh, are you noticing any important trends along the lines of people relocating from urban areas to suburban areas. I mean, there seems to be a lot of um, question about whether this is a lasting trend, a blip, uh, something that will reverse itself or something different. Well, the lasting is the key, Rick. Yes, we have seen uh, a couple of percentage points movement in increasing occupancy levels in the suburbs and multifamily, which is the fastest thing to sort of test and then decreasing correspondingly in the urban areas. We also see single family uh, home sales at really all time highs in many markets. So there, at least transitionally, there's been a very clear movement to pe for people to move outside the urban areas so they can get some space. The question you just asked it, is, is that longer term or will that shift back? Well, are, you see, are you seeing any signs uh, of, of the opposite trend yet? Or do you have reason to think people will go back to cities? Well, we no, we don't have any data to support that yet, but I, my personal belief is it'll happen. We haven't seen a major movement of employers 
suggesting they're going to relocate jobs out of urban areas. They can, I can get you data points to, su to support just about anything. That's not necessarily a curve. You see uh, financials going back to work in Manhattan, as an example, in limited safe quantities. That's obviously crucial to limit the number of people you allow to come back. And, and there, there are some major tech companies that have not offered indefinite work from home. They're doing it right now because they believe it's a safe, sensible thing for their people, and that's good. John Gates is the CEO from JLL, and we appreciate your being here. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.